First Kings chapter 16, verse 23. In the thirty and first year of Asa, king of Judah, that's down south, go to kings that Asa is going through, began Amri to reign over Israel, that's north, twelve years. Six years he reigned in Tarza, and that's the capital. And he bought the hill Samaria. That's quite interesting, which you wouldn't know outside this. But our family read John chapter 4 today about the woman of Samaria at the well of Samaria. And this would be about 884 B.C. He bought the hill Samaria of Shemer for two talents of silver. Now, when you go into the New Testament in the time of Jesus, the Sumerians has already, Israel has already been conquered by the Assyrians. They've gone into their captivity. Samaria has become a city of half-breed Jews. You find it in Nehemiah and Ezra, where the Jews mated with Gentiles. And they became hated, as that woman said in John 4. You guys want anything to do with us, and we don't want to do anything with you. Why are you even talking to me? Talking to Jesus. Who herself was waiting for the Messiah to come. Here right now in 1 Kings. Very important thing. 16. Is the purchase of that city. Samaria. Two towns of silver. And he built on the hill. And. Uh, now that's called a tell. A T-E-L. Tel Aviv. I can't think of any others. Archaeologists call it a tell. And under the tell, these hills are other cities they would dig up. And called the name the city which he built, after the name of Shemer, owner of the hill, Samaria. So, there's nothing new like that. You've got cities called Washington, in honor of George Washington. you got places called Jefferson, in honor of the man Jefferson. He names the city Samaria, for Shemer. This now becomes the capital of Omri in Israel. No more is it Tarza. From now on, Samaria is the capital. But Omri wrought evil in the eyes of the Lord. Not one king in north, not one king in Israel ever does right. And watch this note. And did worse than all that were before him. Remember Jeroboam in his religion, the golden calves, the altars, the man-made priests, the uh, the groves, their own personal holidays. God was angry with. God was provoked to anger. Amri now says he's done worse than all of them. And this has only just begun. For he walked in the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which I just talked about. And in his sin, wherewith he made Israel to sin, to provoke the Lord God of anger with their vanity. And that's that religion. They're making Israel do it. They're making the Jews do it. Don't go down to Jerusalem. Do not serve the one God. Forget Jehovah. Let's go for the cow God. Holy cow. Now the rest of the acts of Amri, which he did, and his might, that he shewed, or showed, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the King of Israel? And that's Chronicles. All right, you want to make an important note now? We have the established kingdom capital of Samaria. Who moves into the White House? <laughs> can I, if I can say that. Now, the capital of Samaria, the foundation, that's not the first time Samaria shows up. There's a couple of chapters beforehand. You have the ruler that builds this city. He has done worse than all the kings. This capital is built upon the sins of Jeroboam and more. It's built on religion and not God. Next one. So Amri slept with his father and was buried in Samaria. Ahab, that's the first time that word shows up, name. Some names I do, some names I don't. And his, Ahab his son reigned in the stead, an old brother. Now it's going to begin. And in the 38th and eighth year of Asa, there's Asa again. 
Remember, Asa is good, good. Yeah, a little pride, a little God sends him a prophet. Get out of my face, put you in jail. Oh, my aching feet, and go to the doctors. King of Judah, Nor, began Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Israel. Nor. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria, there's the capital, 20 and two years. That's interesting. 22 years for a vile, wicked king. It's not a good king. This is not a king that done right. And God gives him 22. We read a guy over here they read who did two years. You are working in two principalities when you look at the government. You're looking at God the Father and you're looking at Satan. Uh, Matthew and Luke 4. Satan goes to Jesus and says, I'll give you all this. You bow down and worship me. And Jesus never rebuked him. And God says, I'll set up who I will set up and I will take down who I'll take down. God gave this man 22 years in the, in, I was going to say presidency, in the kingdom. And Ahab, the son of Amri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. So even when we read about Amri, did worse than all that were before him. Now on the scene is Ahab, and he's done even worse. Er, if I can say that. This man, this kingdom is now vilest than it's ever been. We're going to read about that. And it came to pass, as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Oh, if he only walked in Jeroboam's sins. If he only just worshipped those golden calves. If he only set up his own priest. If he only went to the grove. If he only had the religion of Jeroboam. That would, uh, you know, that's what everybody's been doing. Since Jeroboam split. Not one king's done right. If God's saying, if he only done that. That he took to wife Jezebel, that's the first time she shows up, the daughter of Ethbel, king of the Zidonians. What is worse than Jeroboam's sin? The religion. This woman called Jezebel. And you will find her in the New Testament, you will find her in the book of Revelation, as that great whore, as that woman of the woman of religion, the holy mother. She's got the she's got the the golden cup. She's got the pearls, and her colors are scarlet and red. Which, to the fact is, is a certain city and a certain religion in the world today called Catholic. And God says, "Hey, man, if you only walked in Jeroboam's sins, but you had to go marry that woman, Zidonian, and went and served. Add to it." Baal. Now this is the religion that Jezebel brings. As Solomon and his wives gave him false gods, Jezebel brings Baal and worship him. I'm going to liken this to, I'm going to get a little short little history here. The sins of Jeroboam, the Catholic Church. You got Jezebel and you got her, Baal, and they worship him. That's the Protestants. That's your two major religions dominating the world today. Protestants are not Baptists. Protestants are not Christians. Protestants are cleaned up Catholics. They follow the same ways with different words. Some Protestants don't have as many sacraments as the Catholic. But they do believe that some hocus pocus, some way that that bread and wine, as we read in John 6 today, becomes the literal body and blood of Jesus Christ. As Jezebel will be drinking from her cup the blood of the saints, Jewish saints. You got two major religions built upon Samaria, Ahab, and Jezebel now. And these religions will go out through all the future and history as we look at it today. Future from 1 Kings and the, the, the history from today, 2018, and to right now, present. It's future, it's history, and it's present, these two religions. Baal is the sun god. 
He has a disc around his head, a little yellow round disc. You might want to call it a, a halo. Baal is the supreme god of all gods. And he's married to Ashtoreth. She's called the mother of heaven. She's called the mothers of gods. And worst of him, and he reared up an altar for Baal. So now we've got two foreign altars. Now, whether it be, I would think Jezebel would be the Catholic, you now have a Catholic altar, Baal, and you have a Protestant altar, Jeroboam's cow. Holy cow. You've got two churches now, two church buildings, two assemblies of people that are meeting, and they have the false altars. We will read later on in the story, uh, one or two more chapters, we will read that Jezebel will have 450 prophets of Baal. That's a lot. And they will lie. They have an altar. So do churches. They are a complete imitation. They are anti-God as the Antichrist will be a complete carbon copy of Jesus Christ without the holiness. This will be a carbon copy, and it has been from, Jer from Jeroboam. He has the altar. He has the things that are resembling God in Jerusalem. But it's a copy. It's a carbon copy, not approved, making God promoted to be angered. And we can go tonight and study Jezebel. We'll just pick her up as we study through the scripture. Jezebel ends up as dog doo-doo. For all that she does. She'll be eaten by dogs and pooped. And there'll be a prophecy about that. The daughter of Ithbo, king of the Zidonians. Now notice her father's name, Eth Baal. There it is. Her father was involved in Baal worship and carried the name of Baal. The Zidonians went and served Baal and worshipped him. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal. There's your church. There's a church of fallen gods. There's your church of God that is not God. There's your assembly of people worshiping not God. There is in a Bible that are churches that are there that do not worship God but fallen gods. There it is. 925 years plus or minus before the birth of Jesus Christ. Don't come up to me and tell me you're based upon Jesus and the apostles when you're shown up. B.C. That means before Christ. Now they got B.C.E. and all. They got to change that because you can't take history and with religion because history in the Bible will show religion to be false. So we got to change it all. And change it all. Which he had built in Samaria. So now you have the central headquarters of this major religion by Ahab. As you've got God's central headquarters in Jerusalem. And the religion today, we have no central headquarters of God. The woman told Jesus, well, you say this mountain, we say this mountain. Jesus said, hey, listen, there's coming a day that will not say that mountain or this mountain, but they that are going to worship God in spirit. My holy headquarters today is not the holy city. I don't care about the holy city. Don't send me tickets to go to the holy city because I don't want to go to that unholy city. That city is described as Egypt in the Bible. My holy city is New Jerusalem. My place of abode is where God is right now. H, capitalized heaven. There is a church still today focused upon one location of all the world. And every continent has that name called Rome. Check your maps. Every continent has, the, has a name of Rome. And it's the house of Baal. And he made a grove, as you will find in every church yard of the Catholic. A grove. And watch what God says about it. And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger. Does that sound like God's pleased? Does that sound like God enjoys you? Does that sound like God approves of everything that you're doing? Does it say that God is for 
false gods and false worship? Absolutely not. It makes him angry. And you use these verses to show your Catholic friends, your Protestant friends, and say, hey, read through it. Doesn't this sound like you're an organization? And put, Paul says, I caught you with guile. Get them to say, yeah, that sounds like us. Well, yeah, because they don't know their Bible. They're not allowed to read their Bible. They're forbidden to read the Bible. And you open the Bible and show them like, yeah, well, yeah. And then you bring on the big attack. Lord God of Israel says, I am angry at that. I am angry. Ahab and the nation of Israel is carrying on the Gentile God, the Gentile way. We've already read about the Sodomites. Sodomite is a Gentile perversion. No Jew practiced sodomy. From the time of the calling of coming out on the Passover night of Egypt, that was not named, and it was even prescribed against in the law. And you have that in relation in the Bible to the worship, this worship that's going on here right now. Anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. So Ahab has really, really angered God. He's not on God's good side. Now, next point. Now we're going to, we're going to open up the newspaper and go back down south again. A little side note. In his days, in the days of Ahab, did Heal, Heal, the Beth, Bethlehemite, build Jericho. Jericho has nothing to do with Israel North. But when God comes about something that has been cursed, he overskips Asa and puts the charge on Ahab as if maybe Ahab had something to do with it. Jericho is along the Jordan River where Joshua crossed that city that they marched around where they got Rahab and they conquered the city by shouting in the in the trumpets. He laid the foundation thereof in Abiram, his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof in his youngest son, Segrub, according to the word of the Lord, which he spanked by Joshua, the son of Nun. Now keep your place in 1 Kings 16. Let's go to Joshua 6.26. Where this was spoken. Joshua 6 26. Joshua's going to make a prophecy, and it's recorded here the date, right or wrong, I don't know, 1451 BC. We just read 925. So 320 years. I'm off. I'm wrong. But that's how many years. You can sit down with the calculator. And Joshua adjured them at that time. Saying, curse. That's not good. God put a curse on the serpent. He put a curse of, upon Adam in the ground. He says, that ground is going to, you're going to blood, sweat, and tears, Adam. That serpent the curse is, you'll have no more legs. He put a curse upon Cain for killing his brother and put a mark upon him. Curse be the man before the Lord, Jehovah. That's in the eyes of the Lord. Was he right with the Lord? Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place being hope. In every place, behold the evil and the good. Cursed be the man before the Lord. So God is there. That rises up, gets up, and buildeth this city Jericho, which is now destroyed. It's a ruin. He shall lay the foundation thereof in... What would modern Bibles do with that one? In his firstborn. Look at the wording. And in his youngest son shall he set up the gates. That's Joshua. All right. 
Let's go back to 1 Kings and read what we just read. Verse 34. In his days, Ahab, <laughs> did Hiel, Heo, the Bethlehemite, that's a Bethel. That's one of the places where the golden calves were. So it has to be now reference to Ahab and Jeroboam. I wanted to leave that out for Built Jericho. That's what Joshua prophesied about not doing. What he said is going to happen. He laid the foundation thereof in Abiram, his firstborn. That's what Joshua said, in. What do you mean by in? Don't know. Some would say that he actually built it upon his son. And some say that he, his son died and I don't know. This says in. But that's what Joshua said. And set up the gates thereof in his youngest son, Sergah. That's exactly what Joshua said. Now, something that we did not see in Joshua 6. According to the word of the Lord, which spanked by Joshua the son of... When Joshua spoke that in Joshua 6.26, the Bible now tells us approximately, well, I say 300, something like that, years later, when Joshua had opened up his mouth, God spoke that. That's the inspiration of God about Jericho. This man has been cursed by God through the words of Jericho, according to Joshua 6.26. So everything that's surrounded by Ahab now, he's doing things, he, he, he's angering God, and now this cursed city has been built. And it's only going to get worse. That's all I can say. It's only going to get worse before they die. But all the damage that they'll do.